Now that we have finished the material for chapter two and chapter three, we're gonna move on into this test two review. And very similar to the first round, right, last week, we're going to, um, I downloaded the My Math Labs review, so it's got similar questions, very similar to the ones that you'll see in your test review. Um, and then once you um, complete this, if with an 85% or higher, then you can earn five points on top of your test two score. So that's after I've graded it, after I've added all of the points that I need to add in or subtracted points if I had to do that, um, you get an additional five tagged onto that. So um, there are, I believe, 38 questions on this review. So it definitely is going to take me a few um, video clips in order to get through this entire thing. But we're just going to take it as it is and I'll try to manage my time so that I'm doing each video about 15 minutes. Um, and then you can always do a couple of problems, try your review, do those same similar problems, save it, and then go to the next video. You don't have to watch all of the videos seamlessly and then try to regurgitate all of that information on your review all in one sitting. So take it in pieces and that's a little bit easier to, to manage than to just go through the whole thing. Usually when we do that, by the time we get to the end, we forget what was at the beginning. Um, and that's normal. That happens even in a regular semester, um, especially in a regular semester when there's so many weeks in between the beginning and the end. So let's go ahead and go through this one. So this is the test to review. And the first problem says for the piecewise linear function, find these particular values. So remember how we do this. We figure out which region does the negative 4x value live in. Once we know which region it lives in, then we're gonna use that particular function to plug in the negative four. So negative four is actually here. Negative four is less than negative one. So here's negative one. This side would be x is less than or equal to negative one. Um, and then this side would be x is greater than negative one. Now this side does include the negative one. So it's actually like this, okay? Now, the other side does not include the negative one. So negative four is over here, which means it's in this region. So I'm going to be plugging in negative four into that top function and the result is a negative eight. Now it's asking me to find f of negative one. Here's negative one, but notice it belongs to this side. So I have to use the top equation again and I end up with negative two. Now it's asking me to find f of zero. Well, zero is actually on this side so I am in this region which means I need to be plugging 0 into that function and I end up with negative 1 3 is also over here on in this region so I'm gonna plug in 3 into that function and I end up with the positive 2 and likewise for 4 it's in this same region so I have to use that function so 4 minus 1 is 3 okay now we're going to do another example, and this one's very similar, um, but it's slightly different in the fact that there are three regions that I have to consider. So notice that it says everything less than zero. So here's zero, and everything less than zero is over there. It does have the bracket, so that top region has this. Then it says between zero and nine, and here it's just parentheses because there's no bars on either one of those. And then over here, it's everything bigger than nine, and it would have a bracket because that one has an equal bar, okay? So this region is this one. The middle region is this expression or um, inequality. And then that region is this inequality. I like to draw the number line just so I can see what it looks like and I know where my x values um, live. So negative four, if this is zero, negative four is on this side which means I should be using the function that has this region. So I'm gonna be using this top function. So I'm gonna plug in my negative four, I end up with five plus 12, so my answer here is 17. Negative one also is over here on this side of zero, so it's in the same region, which means I'm gonna use that same function to plug in negative one. And I get eight. Now two is actually in here between zero and nine, so I live in this region, which means I should be using this function to plug in two. And that actually gives me six. 
And then three also lives here in this region. So I'm still in that region. I'm still gonna be using this function and I get nine. And then now nine, nine is right here on the cusp, but which region does it belong to? Does it belong to this one or does it belong to that one? This one equals nine. So this side includes nine, whereas this side does not include nine. So nine actually belongs to this region over here. So I need to be using this bottom function. So four times nine plus five, which is 36 plus five, which is equal to 41. So the answer here is 41, okay? Now, here they want us to graph, and notice that I did show work for these problems, right? So in the uh, exam, when it asks you to show work, this is the kind of thing you're gonna show me. You're gonna be showing me which function you're plugging that number into, and then just finding or computing that value, okay? So now we're going to do this one. It's graphing the piecewise function, so we actually have to graph it. And um, if you recall, that meant I had to make two tables, one for each piece of the graph, and I have two pieces of this graph. And two is the number where it's cutting it off at, okay? This is values that are less than two, so maybe one and zero. And this is values that are greater than two, so maybe three and four. Now the top one, or the first equation, includes two. So this one will have a solid dot, an exaggerated solid dot. This one has no equal bar, so it should have an exaggerated open dot. All the rest of the points have regular dots, just little points, right? Um, okay, so let's see what we get when we plug in two. Three minus, or negative three minus two is gonna give me negative five. Negative three minus one is gonna give me negative four. Negative three minus zero gives me negative three. Now let's plug these in this chart, the numbers in this chart, in the bottom function. So negative six plus two times two. That's the same as negative six plus four, which is negative two. Now negative six plus two times three, that's negative six plus six, which is zero. Now plugging in four, negative six plus two times four is negative six plus eight, which is positive two. And these both have x and x, so they should both look like straight lines. Okay, so let's go plot our points and see which one of these graphs has, and there might be, it looks like I'm being chopped off, there might be more options. Um, I don't know that I have all of the options visible on the printout when I printed it out. So let's just graph it ourselves um, and see what it looks like. And then we can determine if one of these three is the answer or maybe the answer is not shown here, okay? So if I go to two and negative one, two, three, four, five, I'm gonna put an exaggerated solid dot for this point here. Now I'm gonna go to one and negative four and that's gonna be a regular dot. Um, zero and negative three, that's gonna be a regular dot. And so then this is going in this direction. Now over here, I have two and negative two. So two and negative two, we have an open dot. And then three and zero, we have a regular dot. And four and two, we have a regular dot. And so this one's going in this direction. And so do any of the graphs match that? It does, this one has a point, it's supposed to be down here, that one's way up there, so it's not A. Um, this one on the left section, it doesn't even have the solid dots. The dots are in the wrong um, places. It looks like this one matches. Um, two, negative five, one, negative four, zero, negative three, two, negative two, three and zero, and then four and two. So that's the one that matches our graph. Luckily it wasn't D, which I can't see what D is. Um, it's too far to the right and the paper only prints um, so much. So for some of these I am going to have to graph them because um, the computer will have cut me off from all the choices. So again, the same thing here. There's probably a choice D, but it's cut off so I can't see it. So we'll graph it and then see if any of these match. If not, it may have been D that was the correct graph. Now, this is also a piecewise function and I also have to graph it just like the other one. What's different here is that we have three pieces and I have a line, 
a flat line, a horizontal line, and then I have a square, which is a curve. So you notice that there's a curve here, a curve here, a curve here. There needs to have been a curve in order for this graph to make sense, okay? So I'm gonna do three tables then in this case. And let's put the x values that we need to have in there. So for here, I have to have negative five and I have to have negative one. And we want something in between, so I'm gonna pick negative three. For this region, oh, and then for negative five, it should be an exaggerated solid dot. For negative one, it should be an open dot. Now we're gonna move on to the middle section. We've gotta use negative one and zero. Negative one will have a solid dot, zero will have an open dot. And if I pick something in between, we'll put negative 0 0.5. Then now here we have squared, so it starts off with zero, ends up with two, zero should have a solid dot, and two should also have an exaggerated solid dot. And if I pick a number in between, we get one. And so I'm gonna plug all of these into the top function, all of these into the middle, and all of these into the bottom. So for here, um, I have 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. I have 3, or 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. Now moving on here. There's nowhere to plug in the negative 1, so the answer is just negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. When there's no x value to plug it in, this is the y value. Now here, zero squared is zero, minus three is negative three. Uh, one squared is one, minus three is negative two. And two squared is four, minus three is positive one. So if I graph this information on my paper, and you need to graph it on your paper, one, two, three, four, five. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, and the reason you need to graph it on your paper is because if you have it on your paper and you happen to select the wrong one because they were it was very similar to the correct answer, I can at least give you back some credit because I see what you were doing. At least have the charts, if nothing else, but it does help if you actually graph it yourself um, just to see which one matches yours closer. Now negative 5 and negative 15 would be down here with a solid, exaggerated solid dot Oops, you can't see me because it's kind of a little too... Let me widen my view. There we go, now you can see it. And then negative 3 and negative 9 would be about here with a regular point, not an exaggerated point. And then negative 1 and 3, negative 3 would be here with an open dot. Okay, and so this one is going in this way. Now there's no arrows because it does have a solid dot on one end and an open dot on the other end. So no arrows here. Now, here we have negative one and negative three, but it's saying a solid dot. So it kind of fills in this dot. And then negative 0.5 and negative three, zero and negative three, but with an open dot. And so if I connect those, um, there's like a little flat line right there. Now here I have zero and negative three, solid, right? Zero, negative three is solid, so it's going to fill in this pre-existing open dot. Then I have one and negative two, and then I have two and one, and that's going to have an exaggerated solid dot. Remember, this side needs to be a curve, okay? So I'm going to try to draw it kind of curvy. I'm trying my best. I got to make it go through the, through the point as well. So if you're looking at this, actually none of these match. So I'm pretty sure that D is probably going to be the one that matches our graph. This one is all connected like ours is, but notice it's not going in the correct um, direction. This one has the little thing going downward when it should be going upward. Okay, um, I've hit about 14 minutes. So let me take a look at the next problem to see if I could squeeze it in in a minute. Um, that one we can squeeze in a minute. So let's go ahead and do this one. So here, I'm going to match them there, and then I'll write the answers down here. So when you have minus 8 on the inside, that actually moves it to the right. 
When you have minus eight on the outside, that moves it down. When you have eight in the front, that's going to stretch it. When you have eight plus eight on the inside, that's gonna move it to the left. And then when you have plus eight on the outside, that's going to move it up. So for here, this one is going to be choice A. This one is going to be, or I'm sorry, minus is going to be choice B. Um, X squared, that one's gonna be A. Part C is going to be capital E. Part D is going to be D. And then part E is going to be C. So down here where it comes in and you gotta fill it in, you just fill them all in, B, A, E, D, and C. And that's it. So I went a little tiny bit over 15 minutes, but not too bad. Um, so we did cover the first five problems. So you can see already how many videos this is probably going to take. It's going to be quite a few. I don't know exactly how many just yet, but I'll keep going until I'm done.